large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Some people are born pessimists. They go about spreading doom and gloom, often without recourse to established facts. Actually, their fears are groundless. The future in our still-growing America is still onward, still upward. Former President Eisenhower's nonpartisan Commission on National Goals has made a complete report, many, many pages long, in which a course to a bright future is roadmapped. You can get a free copy of highlights of the report simply by writing for it. Get a pencil ready and we'll give you the address. With changes taking place all around the world, many of them profound and sweeping, Americans need more than reassurance of their continued leadership role. They need the blueprint. Right now, for the free booklet, Goals for Americans, send your name and address to Goals, Box 1776, New York 17, New York. That's Goals, Box 1776, New York 17, New York. When you've read this booklet and you've shown it to any local gloom spreaders of your acquaintance, you'll be able to stop the gloom spreading to replace such an attitude with a justifiable air of confidence. Yes, but it won't be ready for half an hour. Why don't you go over to the wagon and take a rest? Oh, now, don't you worry about me, Harriet. Taking out the horses doesn't tire a man out. I know, but this trip has been hard on you. Ah, you should have had a real plainsman for a father, not a withering, pallid school teacher. I prefer a withering, pallid school teacher, if you don't mind. How far is it to Dodge? Oh, another 40 miles, I believe. I'll be glad when we get to Pueblo. I'll feel a lot safer about you. Father? Hmm, what? Look, there are two men riding up out there. Oh, yes. Yes, I see them. All right, Harriet. Now, you hurry. You get over in the brush there and hide. Do I have to? You stay there, no matter what. Oh. Don't argue now, hurry. I, and don't show yourself until I call for you. You promise me now? All right, I promise. Oh, hello. Howdy. Yeah. You alone here? Yes, I, I'm alone. What's a man like you doing out here alone? Well, I'm a, a school teacher. I'm headed for Pueblo. A school teacher? No, ain't that something. What you got in that wagon, mister? Oh, I, uh, why, why, uh, nothing. I, I mean, uh, just my... Personal belongings, that's all. Take a look. We wouldn't want to miss nothing. Yeah. Now, you keep away from there. You've got no right to go through my things. You just keep quiet, mister. No, I'll not have this. You just stand still. I'll have to rough you up good. You've got no right. Hey, look here. Dresses. What? Well, now, you got a woman with you? Oh. No, they're, they're my wife. She died on the way. No, that's too bad. Just about the size I like. And maybe he's lying. Maybe the woman's hiding somewhere. Let's take a look around. Oh, no, you don't. Look out! Oh. Good thing you shot him. He was trying to cut me. Yeah, coming, all right. We better clear out of here. Yeah. He ain't got nothing we want anyway. Father. Oh, no. 
know this way you share, Miss Jones. She's about the prettiest lady I've ever saw. I don't know why you dragged me along, Chester. There's nothing I can do for the girl. Well, I want you to see her. It ain't every day a lady walks in off the prairie and just ups and collapses in a body's arms. Oh, I sure am glad I was here in the Dodge house when she come in. You say Doc's up there now, huh? Uh, yes, sir. It's that room up the top of the stairs. Why, she was just wore to a frazzle. And, Miss Dillon, you know what? She ain't got no friends here at all. Well, with you working for her, she'll soon know everybody in town, Chester. That's it. Oh, hello, Matt. Doc. Uh, uh, doc, uh, how is she, Doc? Well, there's nothing wrong that about 24 hours rest won't cure. Uh, hello, Miss Harriet. I, I brung the marshal. This is him here. How do you do, Marshal? Hello. There'll be some vittles along soon. I, I told them over at Delmonico's and they're fixing you a big pot of soup. I do appreciate all you've done, Chester. Oh, I landed. It ain't nothing. I hear you had a 40-mile walk, Harry. Yes. You were driving a wagon? Chester says your horses ran off. They got away during the night. Mm -hmm. And you were traveling alone? Yes, Marshal. Where are you from, Harry? I'm from St. Louis. I was coming to Dodge. I made it, too. Yeah. Well, I had a little bad luck, that's all. It could happen to anybody. Uh, sure, but it's not often a young girl tries to make a trip like that alone. I did, Marshal. Uh, Harry, those powders I gave you will put you to sleep soon. You'll be fine by tomorrow. Thank you, Doc. And you, too, Chester. Oh, uh, well, anything you need or anything, you just send word. Thank you. Bye, Harriet. Goodbye, Marshal. Doc. Well, what do you think now, Mr. Dillon? Chester, I sure hate to disappoint you, but that girl's a liar. What? I'll ask Doc what he thinks. Well, she wasn't lying about walking 40 miles, but for the rest of it, I have to agree with Matt. Well, now that you're both wrong, why'd she be lying? What are they lie about anyway? Just because the poor girl's all alone and broken and everything, you have to call her a liar. Doggone it, it ain't fair. Hello. Hello. Are you Kitty Russell? Yes. They told me you were the owner of this place. That's right. My name's Harriet Horn. I'm looking for a job. Sit down. Thank you. I've heard about you. The Marshal and Chester are friends of mine. Oh. Well, you look pretty good for a girl who arrived yesterday broke and on foot. Oh. I bought this dress this morning on credit. Well, I'd say you're a good risk. But uh, Harriet, the Long Branch is no place for a girl like you. You don't think I can handle it? There are other jobs. Maybe I can help you find one. Chester was talking about this place. He said that sooner or later, every man in the West comes here. What's that got to do with it? I want the job, Kitty. I've got to have it. You're looking for somebody, is that it? Yes. Well, maybe I know him. I... I'm looking for a husband, Kitty. All right, Harriet. You can work here. Thank you. But you're going to hate it. You're really going to hate it. Well, it's a doggone shame, Miss Harriet. It purely is. Now, Chester, don't worry so about me. I get along fine here. No, you don't. No lady like you couldn't. Can you tell Kitty that and she'll fire me? She should never let you come to work here in the first place, and I told her so, too. Chester. What's the matter? Do you know those men coming over to the bar? Them two? Why, oh, that's Dan Scorp and Webb Hogler. And one's no better than the other, neither. What do you care about them? Huh? Why, I don't. But I've got to talk to them, Chester. What in the world for? I'm supposed to be working here, you know. Well, 
I'm a customer, too, ain't I? You're a friend, Chester. Now, please excuse me. Well, well forever. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Huh? Uh, here. Come on, have a drink. Barkey, bring us glass here. Hey, you're, you're new here, ain't you? Yes, yeah. my name's Harriet. You should come in more often. Well, never mind here, well, Harriet. I, well, I'm well, the one who asked you to have a drink. Well, I've only been here a couple of days. I hope you're not just riding through. No, we'll, we'll be here while we drift in and out, you know. Good. In and out. This town needs some real men. Well, then you're talking about me, ain't you? What do you mean? I'm talking about both of you. Come on now, let's find a table. It's cozier, don't you think? It could be without him. I like both of you. Now, come on. Okay. The Hogler here ain't got no manners at all, Harriet. You can't stand him very long. I'll put money on how long she can stand me. <laughs> oh, you men, you're always betting on everything. <laughs> Chester, where you been? Oh, just dogging around town. I was over at the Long Branch for a little bit. Things pretty quiet, are they? Mm. Mr. Dillon, how could a lady like Harriet Horn walk up to men like Dan Scorp and Webb Hogler and start acting real friendly with them? Scorp and Hogler? At the Long Branch? Yes, sir. I swear I just don't really believe I heard it. Well, just what was she telling them? Oh, I don't know. She... Played up the first one and then the other. Is she still at the Long Branch? Nope. That was over an hour ago. She's at her room now. I'll see you later. Who is it? Marshal Dillon. Hello, Harriet. What do you want, Marshal? I want to talk to you. All right, come in. Sit down. No, thank you. Won't take long. What I came here about is Dan Scorp and Webb Hoogler. What about them? You're setting them up for a fight, aren't you? What? You want them to kill each other if you can arrange it. You're smart, Marshal. You're just smart enough not to have believed you right from the start. Who was traveling with you, Harriet? My father. And they killed him. Oh, I'm sorry. I was hiding and I saw it all. Well, I'll go find them. No, Marshal. They're mine. Harriet, I know how you feel, but those men will get a trial and probably hang. I won't testify. I won't give any evidence. I won't even tell you where it happened. Now, look, Harriet. No, that's... they're mine. They're going to die because of me. I'll be their hangman, not you or anybody else. If I tell them you know, maybe they'll confess. Don't bluff me, Marshal. You know they won't confess. And if you tell them about me, they'll kill me. And you can't put them in jail without my evidence, and you know it. All right, Harriet, you come to me if you change your mind. But in the meantime, remember, this isn't your kind of a game. You can get hurt. Bad. In a world in ever heightened tension, Americans want to know, need to know, more than ever in the past, what's going on in their world. Expanded CBS News has geared itself to meet this need with longer, stronger coverage for 1961. Now, every hour on the hour, every weekday, CBS newsmen report in greater depth and detail from their far-flung posts around the globe. A small army of CBS newsmen is concentrated in areas in Algiers, in the Congo, within fast jet distance of the scenes of any developing news. These men are your on-the-scene links to fastest, fullest, most accurate reporting via CBS News on this station. CBS News, bringing you the facts from wherever they emerge, together with this station's own efficient news-gathering services, are your combination for top coverage, first of all news, local, national, and global. You'll do well to make this address your listening post for latest information as well as for diversion. Our pledge? 
CBS News on this station. First, Ferris, fully factual at all times. see me for, Marshal. I'm busy. What's the matter, Scorp? You afraid your partner will move in on Harriet while you're gone? Huh? How do you know so much? I can understand Hogler getting taken in by her. He hasn't had as much experience as you've had. What are you talking about? Harriet's new here, Scorp, but she's smart. Right off, she's getting a couple of men to fight over her. That'll set her up good, won't it? That'll make her talked about. Important. Like I say, she's smart. What's your interest, Marshal? I don't like gunfighting, Scorp, even among your kind. You put things mighty straight, don't you? You know I don't like either you or Hogler. I'm trying to stop a fight for the sake of the law, not to save either of you. Well, by golly, Marshal. Man just has to believe you. I'll let Hogler have her. He's like you say, he's a younger man than I am. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well. What do you think, Mr. Dillon? Chester, you had a good sleep last night, didn't you? Yes, sir, I did. A little nap this morning, too. Well, you hang around. Keep an eye on Harriet as best you can without anybody knowing it. From now on. From now on till when? I don't know. But you better get started. <laughs> out here, isn't it? That's why I wanted you to come. River's just over beyond that brush. Let's get down. Oh, oh, we can't stay. I promised Dan Scorp I'd have dinner with him at Delmonico's at one o'clock. Well, it ain't hardly noon yet. We got plenty of time. Well, <laughs> all right, but just for a few minutes. Sure, come on. Yeah. You want to walk over and look at the river? No, I, I don't have that much time. What's bothering you, Harry? Nothing. You worried Scorp might take it wrong if you're late? Oh, of course not. I told him we were going for a ride this morning. Sure you did. What do you mean by that? Well, looks like we got company. What? Well, it's Dan Scorp. It sure is. Dan, what are you doing here? Harriet. You are jealous because I'm here with Webb, are you? No, I ain't jealous. No reason I should be jealous. Is there, Hogler? No, none I know of. We've been partners a long time. No gal can bust us up. Not hardly. No. But I sure don't like being used by a gal, do you? Anybody tries it ought to be taught a lesson. What are you two talking about? Scorp, did you tell everybody we were leaving town? Everybody I run into, I told them you and me was headed for Wyoming territory. Good. And when Harriet turns up missing, they'll think she run off with us of her own free will. Makes sense. She sure put on a good show of liking us. You, you're not going to kidnap me. You tell her, Ogler. Harriet, do you ever hear the Comancheros? No. They're renegades. We'll run into them when we get down into the panhandle country. I'm not interested. Oh, I don't matter. They'll take you. White woman fetches a good price. Uh, especially a pretty one. You're crazy, both of you. Now you get Molly. You run out of here and leave me alone, both of you. <laughs> you ever been whipped by a rope, Harriet? You what? If you don't get on that horse, I'll whip you good. Then tie you up and dump you up. All right, hold up there. Oh, well, uh, uh, hello, Marshal. What's going on here, Scorp? Uh, nothing, Marshal. And what are you doing with that rope? Kidnapping me. They said they'd tell me to some <laughs> renegades. Harriet, you sure tickle me. You never know what she's going to do next, do you? Don't listen to the marshal. You ready to play it my way, Harriet? Yes, yes, arrest them. What are you talking about? You two killed a man on the prairie about a week ago. What? It was Harriet's father. She was hiding. She saw the whole thing. Get him over it. Don't try it. Hey, you... You killed him. He didn't even have a chance to draw. He was going for his gun. Now, you drop your gun to the ground, Scorp. No. No, you ain't taking me in, Marshal. (laughs) 
she dead, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, they're both dead. Marshal, it's true. They were going to sell me to some renegades down in Texas. Well, they didn't. Thanks to Chester here. Why? What do you mean? It was Chester who camped all night in the street outside your room. He saw you ride out with Hogler this morning. Oh, Chester. Oh, I've been terrible ignoring you like I did. Oh, well, I I just didn't understand at first. All right, take her back to town, Chester. I'll hang around here till you send somebody out with a wagon. Yes, sir. Are you up to the ride, Miss Harriet? It'll be the best ride I ever had. Well, I, I'll hurry right back, Mr. Dillon. No, send somebody, Chester. We'll hire this job done, huh? Well, doggone. Yes, sir, that, that's fine. Uh, shall we get going, Miss Harry? Yes. Thank you, Marshal. Sure. This is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving, more of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good brand muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Brand and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand Reliability. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Harris. Featured in the cast were Eve McVeigh, John Daner, Ben Wright, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. Have a happy habit Monday through Friday with Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>